Hello everyone. Uh, I hope everyone will have a pleasant time in training. Um, as Lindsay has already uh, made my introduction, uh, my name is Asif Rahman. Currently, I am working with Haiku Software. I have been involved with Postgres for almost 10 years now. Um, previously, I was working with Enterprise DB where I had added Oracle compatibility layer on top of Postgres. I worked on implementing uh, multiple features there uh, related to composite types, procedural languages, uh, developing some backup solutions. So um, the replication in Postgres, um, as the topic of this training suggests, uh, we will be talking about various application options available for creating a replication setup. And we will um, implement some of those and see some in action. So without uh, further ado, uh, let's start our session. So this is the uh, overall session outline. Uh, these are some things that we are going to discuss in this session. Uh, we will go through some terminologies uh, used, in, used in the replication world. A brief history of replication to give you guys some idea of how it came into the Postgres SQL. Uh, we will be using a database setup for experimentation. Uh, so I hope you guys are familiar uh, with Docker. So uh, let's start with uh, agenda. Uh, basically this training is divided into three sections. Uh, in the first part, we will be discussing the replication concepts uh, that will include replication overview, replication techniques, various strategies, uh, in replication such as training replication, logical, synchronous, um, cascading replication, uh, things like that. Uh, after that, um, we will move on to discussing about how to configure them. Uh, we will do that in an uh, interactive, interactive session. Um, and then we finally, we will have a two-end session and that would be, so uh, what is uh, replication? In simple terms, replication refers to uh, duplication, uh, duplication of data, making it redundant so that um, uh, it can be utilized in various scenarios uh, where original data became unavailable or uh, unreachable for any kind of, any number of uh, reasons. Uh, this can happen in various ways. Your disk may crash, hardware failure, um, your site where you had set up your uh, servers can fail entirely, uh, or simply because uh, because of a human error, uh, to just name a few, uh, few ways which can happen. Uh, so there is an obvious need uh, to ensure and protect the data from such failures. Uh, replication is uh, the natural way to protect data against any such disastrous uh, scenarios. So that's a uh, uh, general description of uh, replication. So what's uh, replication when uh, database systems are involved? Uh, we know that Basically, the same concepts uh, apply to the database systems uh, that we just discussed. Uh, we copy data to create redundancy. Redundancy can be created on the same server uh, where your primary server is located, uh, or it can be a remote site uh, connected through some kind of internet, some kind of uh, network. So to create this redundancy, or say the replication environment, um, uh, what you need is, uh, to copy the data from main server that is storing all the data. Uh, let's call, uh, call it the master server or just the master. Uh, over to another server uh, that will house a copy of master's data. Uh, let's call that uh, standby server or simply uh, standby. During the course of uh, uh, this training, uh, I will be using the terminologies of master and primary interchangeably. Uh, they mean the same thing. Similarly, for standbys, uh, a couple of other terms are used. Uh, replica is one of them. 
uh, replica or slave, uh, they, they, they all represent the same uh, meaning. So uh, we need to copy data uh, from the main server and copy over it to the uh, standby. The process seems very simple. You have to copy data. But how about while you are copying the data, that exact data at that point is being updated. Um, for example, I change the value of a variable or a column from zero to one. Uh, will, what will you be copying? Uh, will you have, uh, after your copy is finished, will you have zero or one? Uh, which is the correct uh, version? Uh, even more so, consider that when I made the change uh, and then I reverted it, um, rolled back. So, which is uh, uh, what will happen uh, during that time? Which data is the correct one? Consider that uh, there is a, a lot of other data that depends on the value of this column. Say an application needs to make decision that if the value is one, uh, it will ex execute some kind of uh, command. Uh, otherwise it will not do so. So things are very complicated uh, when we talk about replication in database system. Databases uh, simply copying the file may result in corrupted data or perhaps even worse uh, lead to an unexpected output uh, that may cause mayhem. Uh, so the replication is not just a straightforward process uh, with database system while copying uh, we have to ensure uh, that in a particular point in time, all the data is same between master and standby. We will see how we accomplish that uh, later in this session. Uh, but the concept is uh, simple enough um, that standbys uh, have to maintain a copy of primary or main server data. So um, let's uh, have a quick walk through uh, of how the replication was added to the Postgres server. Um, this is just to give you guys an overview of how replication changed and improved uh, over the years. And also um, if you have to work with some older versions of the Postgres, then you may know some of the differences. Um, it all started with uh, addition of wall files in uh, Postgres 7.1 version. Um, it could not be called replication feature at that point uh, because it became the foundation for the replications uh, uh, later on. Um, in 7.1, uh, walls could not be used for this purpose. Uh, in true sense, it was only one um, that provided a proper way to replicate objects in Postgres at first. Uh, this uh, Sloney one was a trigger based replication system. Um, much after that, um, in Postgres version 8, uh, point in time recovery became part of uh, Postgres, um, which added the ability to archive the wall files. Uh, by the way, we will uh, uh, see wall files in more detail uh, later on. Um, so, uh, uh, Point in time recovery uh, added the ability to archive the wall file and uh, uh, later on uh, replay them uh, on another uh, server of the same version. So people started using this method to create, create uh, their own standby. However, those standbys uh, could not um, be used to uh, query data. They were basically uh, the warm standbys. After that, um, came along with stream, streaming replication. Uh, it was based on the wall shipping method. And from there, this feature kept enhancing, uh, such as uh, the later on, uh, the synchronous replication was added, uh, cascading uh, streaming replication was added, timeline management, and so on. Uh, one can say that streaming replication was the first proper replication system in Postgres. Uh, and that is, uh, and now uh, we also have uh, the logical replication as well. Uh, that was introduced in version 10. Uh, 
Right. Uh, let's uh, uh, talk about uh, Docker setup that we uh, will be using uh, for this training. Uh, the Docker setup that I am going to use uh, will consist of uh, uh, three containers. Uh, each of the container will uh, represent uh, either master or standby or another standby. So basically in this uh, cluster, uh, we will have one uh, main server and uh, two standby. Uh, not necessarily that we will uh, not necessarily be using all the three containers. Um, that will depend on uh, uh, which technique we are going to uh, use at that time. So uh, please uh, 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 clone this uh, repository. Uh, if uh, you have it already, uh, please uh, clone this repository and uh, you will, uh, uh, and it will contain uh, our Docker images uh, that we will be using uh, for our interactive session. I hope everyone has the Docker setup installed. Uh, uh, so just uh, give you a um, uh, little bit of information about the Docker setup. Um, uh, there is, uh, when you uh, clone this uh, repository, uh, there will be uh, a couple of subdirectories. Uh, one of the subdirectories named examples. Uh, in this, uh, you will see uh, further subdirectories uh, called archive, streaming, streaming sync, cascading. Uh, basically, these subdirectories are uh, already configured, uh, uh, have been already configured. Uh, they are for you guys to experiment with. There is a subdirectory uh, named Docker. Um, we will be using that setup uh, for our interact session. All right. So in the next couple of uh, slides, we will uh, uh, cover a few things. Things like uh, the terminologies used in the replication. Uh, why do we need uh, replication? Uh, what techniques are available to us, and how uh, these are techniques work. So, uh, replication terminology. Um, there are some of the terms that have same meaning and are uh, used interchangeably. Um, master slave, master standby, master replica, primary scannery, primary standby. These are all uh, kind of, uh, they all have kind of same meaning. Uh, all these terms uh, denote the same configuration. Uh, basically, this tells us that there is one main server, uh, and there are one or more standbys in this, in this uh, configuration. Uh, these terms are trying to tell us that. Uh, then there is um, physical replication term used. Uh, streaming replication uh, is used. Uh, both of these terms are interchangeably used in Postgres documentation. Uh, basically, they are uh, referring to referring to the same thing. Uh, they uh, tells us that this kind of replication is basically uh, relying on uh, uh, transmitting the data pages over to the network connection. Hot standby. Um, hot standby basically represents uh, uh, basically uh, any uh, standby by uh, can have two kind of uh, behaviors. Uh, one uh, where our standby is capable of serving the client request means that it can receive the queries, uh, and the other is uh, where the standby uh, cannot accept the uh, queries. So uh, the where a standby can accept the queries uh, or client connections uh, basically. Uh, those uh, standbys are called hot standby. And where a standby cannot accept the uh, uh, queries, those standbys are called uh, warm standby. Hot standby is uh, one other distinction between uh, these two. Uh, um, sorry, uh, the hot standbys basically receive the queries, but they, uh, they, can, they are only read only uh, instances. Um, you cannot perform any writes on them. Uh, these were some of the major terms. Uh, so let's uh, move on to why we need replication. So we already uh, have a database server set up and it's working fine and the physical hardware is good enough so that there are no performance issues as well. So why would you set up a replication system? 
Well, um, although your system uh, may be working fine, uh, but uh, what happen? Uh, what will happen if your disk fails? Um, or you lose the network connectivity? Or your your uh, site just goes down for any number of uh, reasons? So basically, these are a um, uh, couple of, couple of scenarios um, where replication setup comes in handy. So uh, these uh, are listed, uh, are very true scenarios uh, that uh, basically sh uh, shows the importance of replication. Uh, the first one is uh, high availability. So high availability is uh, one of the reason, one of the main uh, reason for a replication setup. Um, imagine the database server going down during the peak hours of workload. Um, if you were to identify uh, and diagnose the problem at that point, uh, how much time would it take? Um, maybe you can recover the database system quickly enough, but what if no solution is found in, in time? Or even if you uh, found the solution implementing that solution, would surely take some time. One other uh, possibility is that you can bring up one of the backups that you have been keeping, but still uh, bringing, restoring the backup and starting the server over that backup uh, would take quite some time, right? So even then, the, there would be uh, another drawback that uh, backup may not be up to date. Uh, you took a backup quite a while ago, uh, it, uh, it can depend on your uh, back, backing up policy, but still um, backups cannot ensure that you have uh, up-to-date data. So this raises the question, um, can you afford that much downtime? In most circumstances, uh, the answer would be no. So what would be the appropriate policy for such uh, scenarios? That would be, um, replication uh, where a replica or standby is continuously catching up to the primary server and can be brought up in uh, no time. Disaster recovery, um, basically uh, the same logic applies as HA. Uh, you have set up replication, you have um, uh, redundancy in place, that can be on-site, off-site, uh, at multiple geographical locations. So if, if your uh, site goes down for any reason, uh, you have plenty of uh, options to bring your services online. All right, so, so if the uh, workload keeps increasing more than uh, one system can handle, um, uh, you have the option to handle such scenarios with replication as well. Uh, if one of the, if your main server uh, is not able to uh, serve in a uh, timely manner and uh, perhaps uh, if you have the leverage uh, of uh, replication, uh, you might direct some of the traffic to those replicas. That will uh, surely uh, reduce some burden from the main server. Uh, similarly, replication can be used for uh, load balancing uh, your workload. There are a couple of ways uh, where you can uh, direct your uh, traffic to some of your replicas instead of uh, forwarding them to primary server to serve. All of the read traffic basically can be diverted to uh, your standby. So um, backup, although you uh, might have, a, a reg you might be taking regular backups. However, backups tend to be not up to date to your current system. Uh, standbys are, since the standbys are always trying to catch up to your main server, they are your uh, most up-to-date backup as well. And not only that, um, not only you will have a uh, latest backup uh, with standbys, uh, recovering from uh, those backups would be more quick, quicker, and there would be um, very low chance to lose any uh, data as well. Um, here I'm talking about uh, the, uh, the data change that has happened between 
taking the backup and the time it uh, has elapsed since then. All right. So as uh, we have discussed, the purpose of application is to have more than one reliable copy of database at all times. Uh, to that end, um, getting a redundant copy of running database system can be done in plenty of ways, uh, even in more ways than I can imagine right now. Uh, for instance, the simplest way would be to install a RAID controller uh, and get the data written to multiple disks at the same time. Uh, that will give us a full-fledged working replication system. But the problem with this replication solution is that um, it will only guard us uh, against the disk failure and our system will be prone to all other hazards that we can possibly imagine. Uh, this also does not protect us from application crashes, uh, which can lead to service downtime. Uh, people have been successfully doing database replication by using middleware products like uh, PG Pool 2 uh, that sits between client and the server and do the statement based replication by sending the DDLs to multiple configured servers. So, what I want you guys to understand is that. The replication is just a way to make reliable data copies. And we can have so many ways to keep that. Um, of course, um, each of the technique has its own merits and demerits. Um, some are easier to set up, but are prone to uh, any kinds of failures, while other are somewhat difficult to manage and uh, set up, difficult to manage and set up, uh, yet are more uh, reliable and robust. So uh, when we talk about a uh, modern replication system in Postgres, uh, we are now normally referring to streaming replication uh, along with the logical replication. Both of these are native to Postgres now. Um, and our log-based replication technique, uh, this training will more or less re revolve around that. So um, in general, um, uh, these techniques can be divided into treatment-based uh, trigger-based replication, binary replication, uh, and logical uh, replication. Uh, these are the most uh, highlighted ones. Statement-based uh, just means that the replication is done using uh, manipulating SQL statements somehow, uh, whether you send queries to database instances directly or have some instances forward those queries. Binary means to have some uh, means with which you can manipulate uh, the actual data pages that were uh, modified to achieve the, the repli uh, replication. So with statement based, uh, uh, it's basically uh, a very basic method to set up a replication system. Pretty much every database system starts with it uh, because all you have to do is direct all writes to uh, all the nodes in, the, in your uh, cluster and that's it um, you you have uh, a, a, at one level of uh, replication in place um, definitely you will have to uh, work out a few things but that's pretty much it and uh, it's uh, much simpler and easier to implement so in the post in postgres case uh, this kind of replication relies on third party applications such as pg pool 2 uh, basically, your clients uh, connect to uh, PG Pool 2. Uh, then PG Pool 2 is then responsible to direct the queries to all database nodes that are connected to it. Um, and then it will uh, try to resolve any inconsistencies between them. The next, we have uh, trigger-based uh, replication setup. Uh, database triggers is a feature that initiates a process when data within a database system is modified. Um, in case of uh, insertion, uh, new data is available to the trigger. And in case of deletion or glitchation, both new and old data is available to it. So another way to do replication would be to use trigger. Uh, I think every worthwhile RDBMS system um, provides this functionality. So what we can do is, uh, to write the after data manipulation trigger and in the trigger functions, just send the copy of data to server maintaining the data copy. 
of course that would require a um, lot of setup and work and also reconciling the data would be one heck of a task uh, with that approach um, a simpler way to set up a trigger based application is through third party application again um, application that supports trigger based application ensure that they send the rights to the master and when changes has been applied then those new changes get to distributed to other standby basically this is achieved by uh, usually by deploying our daemon process along with the each database server uh, these daemon processes monitor the triggers and, and synchronizes the data between these nodes um, Saloni is basically um, the prime example uh, of this kind of replication so uh, some of the advantages that are available with this system, uh, they, uh, with trigger-based replication is that uh, uh, you can choose the uh, objects that you want to replicate. You don't have to replicate the, your whole cluster. Uh, you can choose the uh, subset uh, of the objects that you want to replicate. They can work across multiple uh, server, different server versions. You can set them up in cascading replication mode. Uh, you can use this kind of replication to upgrade from older versions to the newer version. And one more thing is that the standby can still accept the read and write traffic. Uh, usually when we will, we will see in uh, uh, next two slides with streaming and with streaming the application, uh, usually standbys uh, are not able to accept the right traffic however uh, as i mentioned before when there are merits there are demerits uh, of the system as well so with uh, trigger based replication uh, it's always asynchronous and the data objects that you uh, that you can uh, replicate uh, they have to be unique be able to uniquely identifiable that means usage, usage of uh, primary keys and as uh, in the previous slide, uh, I sh this is kind of a, a Sony uh, setup where uh, each Sony daemon is uh, located with each node. Uh, basically, setting them up is quite complex, and its configuration is uh, is is a lot more difficult. So, the binary replication. So, before uh, uh, we talk about binary replication. Uh, Let's discuss what are the wall files uh, because binary replication is based on this whole concept. Wall files are the write ahead log. These files keep the history of all data changes that are made to the database system. Uh, this is done to ensure that uh, the data loss does not occur in case of a system failure. And if a failure occurs, they, these log files uh, have sufficient information uh, in them so, so that the database system can recover itself using that information. Uh, to do that, uh, whenever a write is made to the database system, it is written to the log file as wall record. Uh, these records are first written in memory wall buffers, and then they are, uh, when, and when, when the transaction is committed, uh, those records are uh, written to the disk. Uh, in Postgres, the wall files uh, are by default 16 megabytes, uh, but that size, but that size can be changed in, in current versions of the Postgres. So, uh, the, uh, in binary application, basically, uh, one server instance receives the writes, and then these writes are distributed to other standbys. Uh, distribution is done by sending the data pages. Uh, that got changed during the write operations. Uh, in Postgres, uh, we can use this capability in two ways. Uh, the one of uh, which is the wall-based log shipping, uh, also known as archiving. Um, in this approach, uh, we ship the complete 16 megabytes of files uh, to the standbys. And then the standbys uh, replay them on themselves. The other way is uh, to instead of uh, sending the complete wall files, the data chunks that are to be stored in the wall files, they are streamed uh, directly to the standbys. 
uh, that way standby will uh, apply those chunks uh, just as they would uh, replay the wall file so uh, there are um, several advantages to the binary replication uh, the first one is uh, that it's um, a built-in method into the postgres database server uh, so it's natively supported um, it's very easier to set up uh, and is very highly tested uh, we will uh, create a setup set using uh, this technique uh, later on very low administrative cost is involved very low overhead uh, is on the primary uh, server uh, because uh, there is very minimal load uh, on database server to maintain the standby the master or primary only has to send the change blocks uh, to the uh, standby instead of um, sending the whole chunks of files uh, to standby so uh, the other advantage is that it uh, along with asynchronous mode it also supports asynchronous uh, replication uh, synchronous replication basically uh, ensures that there is very minimal uh, there, there is uh, almost no uh, data loss between uh, uh, main server and the standby uh, it ensures that standby is, is standby server is always um, in sync with uh, the main server uh, and the uh, other advantage is that it also supports uh, the cascading replication uh, cascading replication basically uh, entails that um, one of your standby can uh, can get its uh, data chunks from another standby instead of uh, pulling the change blocks from uh, the main server standby can communicate to another standby uh, that way it will further uh, distribute the load on uh, from the um, uh, main server so while there are uh, advantages to uh, binary application uh, there are uh, two disadvantages to this approach so with the binary application one of the big this advantage is that you have to uh, replicate the whole uh, database cluster. Um, you cannot uh, say uh, that uh, although you have a couple of uh, other objects, but uh, uh, the main and important objects, uh, if you want to replicate only the important ones, uh, you cannot select them. Uh, you have to have replicated the whole cluster uh, over to the standby. The next one would be uh, that the standbys in this configuration cannot accept the write. They can uh, either uh, serve as a warm standby or a hot standby, but they cannot uh, do the write. And the most uh, important one is that you cannot set up this replication across different versions of uh, the database server. Uh, you cannot have a Postgres version 10, uh, getting replicated over to the process version 12 or vice versa okay so uh, let's turn to the interactive session now and see when a replication works uh, we will start with file based log string method and we will go from there to streaming replication and then later on we will see about um, logical replication uh, just so you know um, from here uh, onwards, uh, basically uh, all the steps that are required to uh, configure uh, this, uh, this replication are listed in the site. Uh, but we will be doing, uh, we will be using the uh, terminal to show uh, how to uh, basically uh, uh, how to actually uh, configure the this setup. Okay, this is my uh, Git repository. Um, this is the examples uh, directory that I was talking about earlier. Uh, this contains uh, already pre-configured, uh, this has already pre-configured -pre uh, replication techniques. Uh, archive is for uh, wall archiving. Uh, logical replication is for logical replication and logical replication cascading mode. Uh, similarly, there is a streaming, streaming synchronous, and streaming synchronous and cascading uh, mode. Uh, they, they are already pre configured, uh, so you can uh, play around them. Uh, 
but for our uh, for this session we will be using uh, our docker uh, set, set setup so let's start our uh, docker container Oops. Uh, sorry about that i think i have been using this network uh, and i did not release that let me take care of that. Okay, so I have created this Docker Compose file. Uh, basically, uh, it will uh, launch uh, three containers. I have already named these containers. Uh, one is called master, the other one is called standby, and uh, another standby that's named uh, standby2. I have already uh, assigned them six IP addresses, so it would be easier uh, for us to um, uh, create the configurations that we are going to create. Okay, so my containers are good. Uh, let's uh, attach to the containers. You can attach to the uh, containers using exit, docker exit command. And uh, either you can specify the IP direct or uh, since they, they have been labeled uh, in Docker Compose, uh, you can use the, those label, label names as well. So when I attach master, it will basically my first container that will be serving as a master, a master database server. Um, each uh, container has already uh, Postgres server version 12 installed. And there is the, uh, I have already configured the sudo and SSH uh, server as well. Uh, so if we have to do SSH from uh, one container to another, that would be easier. Okay, a uh, couple of uh, uh, points. Uh, the server installation path is PG, user PG12. Well. Um, each environment has a couple of uh, Postgres related variables exported, um, which are PG data and PG port. Basically, these are uh, the standard uh, values that are used in uh, CentOS 7 based systems. So I'm just uh, using those values. So uh, let's uh, create our first um, uh, replication setup that is going to be based on uh, that is going to be based on archiving, uh, archiving or in other words, uh, wall-based shipping method. So let's first uh, initialize the database, database cluster on the master uh, server. Uh, let's see the contents of uh, our data directory that we just initialized. Um, so uh, this is the data directory uh, which will be used to run the master database server. Uh, let's see its configuration file. Uh, we will be making changes to these configuration files. In Postgres, uh, basically uh, any parameters that you need to set at startup, you can change them in postgres.com. Um, this file contains uh, all the default values and the good practice is that when you have to uh, make changes, uh, you, you will uh, do that, uh, you will add them into the postgres auto.com file. 
so far uh, there is nothing here. Uh, we will uh, be adding our configuration here. So the archiving basically works, uh, uh, works in the way, uh, basically you create a, a mount point or a share a disk uh, where your master database server will be saving the wall file and that location should be accessible to your standby server. So the database, uh, so those standbys can uh, read those wall files uh, and apply them onto themselves. So uh, generally uh, you have some kind of uh, network mount point available to you. But for our session, uh, we will be uh, copying uh, wall files from one container to another so that those are accessible to uh, the standby server. And, and to do that, uh, what we need first is to set up a, a SSH uh, based connection between the two containers. So I, I, I will be uh, doing that uh, right away. So SSH keygen can be used to uh, create a, a private key uh, that you will use. So uh, to uh, you, you will basically copy uh, this password phrase file uh, to uh, the other container so that when you uh, SSH to other container, you will not have to provide the password every time. Uh, we are doing that because uh, we will be using STP command to copy the wall files from uh, master server to standby server. Okay, so the default password, uh, the default user is Postgres and its password is the same. Uh, but instead of providing uh, the password every time when you do SSH, we create setup so that we don't have to uh, provide the password again and again. All right, so uh, our password SSH connection is established. So just to give you guys uh, a brief overview of uh, file-based log shipping, uh, basically the primary server uh, is going to copy wall files uh, to the configured location uh, that we are going to uh, do right away. Uh, these wall files, um, when a database server is writing to the wall file and, and the 16 megabytes of data has been written to those wall files, um, it will uh, server has the option to copy the, that file uh, over to the location that you can uh, tell that server to uh, that you can tell it to the server. Uh, you do that using the archive command uh, parameter uh, that is available in postgres.com file. Similarly, the standbys have the option to read those wall files from that location using the restore underscore command parameter. Standby is basically kind of uh, keep pulling that location whenever there is a, a wall file is available, it will read that and uh, apply that wall files onto itself. Okay, this is a, a Docker environment um, uh, that we already discussed. The master uh, is, its host name is master. The standby host name is standby. Standby two, again, if we use that, uh, it will have a standby uh, host name standby two. So we just uh, created a passwordless SSH connection. There are, now we are going to use, uh, uh, we're going to use, uh, to create a, a mount point where uh, that master can uh, copy wall files and standby can uh, create those wall files. Uh, these are the, basically uh, the same steps that I just performed uh, to create a passwordless uh, SSH connection. Uh, the next step would be to create a location to store the wall files. So this is the command uh, that we are going to use uh, to create 
uh, location on the standby server uh, so that it can so that the primary main server can write the wall files there um, in this uh, setup basically i am creating the mount file on standby server but this location can be uh, any accessible mount point uh, that is accessible to both uh, master and standby server all right, since we uh, had already set up passwordless SSH connection, there was no need for it to ask the password again. Um, in fact, let's uh, attach the standby server as well. Standby. All right. Um, as mentioned before, uh, this container is named standby. Uh, same environment as the master server. And we just created a mount point at slash archive dir at the root of the file system. Here we go. So uh, we already had uh, initialized our uh, database system. What we need to do now is uh, to make sure that our authentication settings are uh, there so that we can uh, connect to the uh, to our server from anywhere. Uh, for that, uh, we will be editing our PGHB configuration file. Uh, that contains the, all the authentication settings. Let's edit the .com. So for this session, I'm uh, just using the trust method and I'm allow allowing the connections to be received from everywhere. Uh, without any restrictions, um, but uh, obviously uh, this is the place uh, where you will have to uh, ensure that your database systems are uh, secure and uh, could not be accessed unauthorized. All right, so this is the default. Uh, these are all the default values. I'm just going to copy uh, the configuration file that where I have already made changes and we will uh, see those changes. Okay. So uh, these are the settings that we are going to use uh, for this setup. Uh, basically, I am allowing uh, allowing uh, connections, uh, replication connections, uh, as well as uh, normal connections from everywhere uh, in the subset, uh, in the subnet, the, from every uh, device that is available in the subnet of 172 and 22, uh, and they don't need to um, uh, provide any uh, password for uh, connect, connecting to Postgres. All right, so the next thing we are going to do is configure um, to see the configuration that we are going to add uh, in our Postgres configuration file. Uh, these are the settings that are needed. Um, the first one, uh, listen address, basically it allows connections from everywhere. Uh, static means uh, allow the connection from everywhere uh, unless you want to restrict that you can specify um, a comma separated list of addresses if you want to restrict that access. 
uh, we are going to use the same uh, uh, default port. Um, next connection basically tells that how many uh, simultaneous connections that you are going to allow to connect. Uh, you can specify the value that uh, you can think is more appropriate. Since um, we are going to set up a ball shipping uh, method, uh, we need to set up the wall level that is uh, one of one of the uh, mandatory uh, parameters uh, if we want to set up to work uh, and we are going to set this to replica prior to uh, this version uh, there could be uh, other values that you could specify here for example you could have yeah, specified hot standby uh, minimal and few other um, replica specifying replica here basically ensures that our wall files have in, enough information so that the standbys can uh, replicate the changes that have been made on the primary server if you set it to minimal um, wall files will not contain that much information uh, they will only include the very necessary uh, information that is required to restart your uh, primary server in case it crashed, uh, but your standbys will not be able to um, utilize that uh, information, or to uh, or uh, they will not be able to uh, replicate uh, changes made on the primary uh, database server. Uh, the next thing uh, is max wall sender. Oh, sorry, uh, this is not required for. Um, archiving purposes uh, for archiving uh, what we need is archiving mode uh, we have to uh, set it to on if you we want to enable the archiving mode uh, then we have archive underscore command parameters uh, this is the command uh, that will copy your wall files to a location that is accessible to both uh, instances to primary as well as to the standby um, usually you uh, should utilize some kind of uh, scape that ensures uh, that does the error checking and stuff like that uh, but you can simply use any uh, command any executable command here uh, so uh, currently we are uh, using SCP. Uh, basically, we are saying that you should uh, copy the wall uh, file. Uh, percent P is basically uh, showing the source path and post this at once to that uh, IP address uh, slash the path is basically the destination. In this command, um, we are basically using a uh, few of the placeholders. Uh, Person P is will get replaced internally uh, with full uh, path of the file, uh, while percent F at the end uh, here it will only specify the uh, file name. Uh, it will remove the base path. Um, since we are uh, copying from this source to uh, our standby server, um, okay, so uh, the next parameter is archive timeout. Uh, basically, this uh, parameter uh, will force uh, the database server to uh, switch wall files uh, after this number of seconds has passed. Um, basically, um, if there is no uh, load on the master server, then it might not uh, write the wall files frequently enough. So, standby can um, keep waiting. Uh, this is one of ways to make sure that your setup is. Um, uh, in good condition. So 
let me copy this uh file to data Um, okay, let's start uh, the database uh, server on the master. User order twelve. Um, color data. All right, our database system server has been started. Um, let's see if we are receiving the wall file, if any. Um, but for that, we will have to generate some kind of uh, traffic, uh, some kind of uh, data. Uh, we will do that in a moment. Um, First, let's uh, configure our uh, standby, and then we'll see if we are getting any data uh, from the master to standby. Uh, to do that, uh, let's uh, first take a backup from the uh, master server. We'll do that using a PG based backup utility uh, that's available as part of the Postgres installation. Master. Uh, it should be able to translate it into the IP address of master server. Uh, since uh, we are setting up standby, we can use the same directory that is being used in the basically same path that is being used by the master. We want a plain uh, backup and we want to do this wall file and we want to see the progress bar. All right, uh, since there was no additional data, it was quick enough, but it will obviously take some time to take a backup. Um, in the On standby, uh, let's edit the Postgres conf file and show that we want to uh, basically set up a hot standby. Let's go on. Uh, we want to restore. Sorry, restore. We want to specify the restore command. Uh, so that it knows where from where to copy the uh, wall file. So I already um, basically have uh, created the configuration for this one. Uh, standby dot archiving. Okay, so here. Um, so let's copy this uh, file over there. All right, so uh, the next step would be that we want to tell the uh, standby to start in the standby mode. Uh, we do that by using, by creating a, a empty file in the PG data directory uh, by the name of standby.signal file. Uh, this is the new way of uh, telling uh, the standby that is going to be st uh, started in the standby mode. So let's create that file. Um,
all right we already have started the master database um, let's uh, start our uh, secondary database again All right, our server has started. Uh, let's uh, generate some uh, traffic, uh, some create some data on the master database, uh, and we will see if we could uh, replicate if the replication is happening between these two instances. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, Okay, I'm just uh, creating a, a dummy table uh, with random values. Uh, oh. Uh, let's try this one. Uh, so while editing the PG, PG HP conf, uh, I had removed the default values uh, that were allowing the local connection. Um, that's why we got this error. Okay, first PH here, if we can. My table name was just step two. All right. Um, okay, so let's see if it's, this data is available on standby. Uh, again, same problem, but this time we are going to connect with standby. about that stand by oh it has not been replicated so far um uh, let's see why not um uh, uh what files are being generated um uh, I guess I made a mistake while specifying the path. Um, this is the path that actually, where actually data is being copied. Um, but that directly does not exist. So let me just create that quickly. Here we go. Uh, we know the database server from uh, master instance has started copying the wall files here. And if we run the uh, our query again, uh, yeah. So we can now access the same table that we created and inserted values in the master database uh, on the standby. Right, so, uh, so this is uh, basically uh, the wall shipping method. Uh, you create a location where your master database can um, copy the wall file and your standbys can read from those. Um, and uh, the standbys then uh, can apply those wall files uh, onto themselves. Uh, that's pretty much uh, it for the file based log shipping method. Uh, the next we will be talking about uh, streaming block based uh, 
streaming replication. Uh, we will see how uh, that goes. Okay, this is a new topic. All right, guys. Uh, so um, uh, the next session is uh, about streaming replication. Uh, it's called block based as well because we will be um, streaming uh, data chunks that have been modified uh, over to the standby servers. Um, that way, the standby servers can apply only those chunks instead of reading them from the wall file. In this uh, configuration, uh, basically the standby servers connect to the primary. Uh, primary streams the wall records to the standby as they are generated without uh, waiting for the wall files to actually get filled. This way, uh, basically it eliminates the need of uh, scripts and commands in archive uh, that we specify in the archive underscore command parameter. Um, uh, and it also eliminates the intermediate uh, shared storage uh, that we created uh, for the archiving setup uh, between the servers. Streaming replication uh, is asynchronous by default, but synchronous uh, mode is, all, uh, is also supported as well as uh, cascading replication is all, uh, also supported. So basically, uh, uh, when we set up streaming replication, uh, there are a couple of processes uh, that get launched in this setup. Um, uh, one of them is called wall receiver. Um, wall receiver is the process uh, that's built into the database server uh, that uh, receives those data chunks that are generated being by the uh, master server and the master server uh, basically stream those uh, data chunks uh, using another uh, server process uh, that's called wall sender process so basically uh, these two processes uh, connect with each other to share this information. Some of the uh, major benefits uh, of streaming replication, um, uh, these are that, the, uh, that uh, in this uh, replication setup, basically you have the DDL support. That means any DDL that's made on the primary server is automatically available on standby. You don't have to configure anything extra uh, to bring the details uh, there. Hot standby mode is supported. Uh, that way you will be able to use your standbys to uh, uh, redirect the uh, read uh, traffic uh, to those standbys. Again, uh, since uh, your standbys are able to accept the read traffic, uh, you can use that uh, to um, provide read scalability. Uh, again, cascading replication is uh, supported by this uh, uh, technique. Um, that means that you 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 can use one of uh, you can use uh, one standby to receive the data changes from the master. While if you have a few other standbys, you can uh, connect those standbys to get the changes from from uh, the, from another standby. Uh, that way, uh, uh, let's say you have uh, three standbys. Uh, one can receive the data changes from the master directly, and the other two can receive uh, from the standby. That way, the, these two standbys will not be adding more. Uh, load uh, directly onto the uh, master database server. Asynchronous, synchronous are both supported. The additional benefit of uh, this approach is that uh, at any given time, you can add additional uh, standbys uh, without uh, bringing down the uh, primary database server down. While the database server is active, you can still attach the standbys uh, to that. And uh, the finally, um, 
in streaming replication, all database uh, objects are replicated. So you don't have to worry about the if you left out left out uh, some of the objects uh, from being replicated. Uh, how uh, it works uh, in this setup? Uh, standby server basically connects to uh, establishes uh, a database connection uh, to the primary server. Uh, using that connection, it will receive the wall records from the uh, master. Basically, this connection will be made by wall receiver process. Uh, this process will utilize primary underscore con info parameter. Uh, primary underscore con info parameter uh, tells the standby to to where to connect, uh, which uh, basically uh, this parameter values will be used to determine which is your uh, master server. Uh, again, uh, for this uh, configuration to work, uh, primary server must ensure that sufficient volume information is being logged. And we ensure that uh, using the wall underscore level parameter, as I uh, mentioned earlier, uh, there are a couple of uh, uh, parameters that you can specify. Uh, there are a couple of values that you can uh, specify to this minimal replica or logical. Replica value basically ensures that there is enough information uh, so that the standby can uh, apply that information onto themselves. Uh, we also have to ensure uh, max wall sender uh, parameters is enabled. Uh, this will uh, tell the primary uh, server that uh, this many uh, standbys basically can connect with it. All right, so the step one uh, for this uh, setup would be again to edit the postgres.auto.com file and make appropriate changes there. So let's go to the terminal. Uh, we already uh, established the archiving setup. Uh, we will be um, enhancing the same uh, to implement the streaming uh, replication uh, setup. So uh, let me just uh, shut down the previous started server uh, so that we can make appropriate changes to the configuration file. All right. Uh, all right. Uh, standby goes down. Stop the primary server. Okay. Uh, so these are a couple of uh, parameters that we have to uh, ensure that are present. Uh, let me show you the configuration file that we will be using for this setup. Master stream. Okay, streaming. Okay, so here's the configuration file. Uh, most of the values uh, in this file are the same as archiving wall archiving. Uh, the couple of important um, parameters are here. Uh, so the most important one will be the wall underscore level. Uh, that has to be set to replica. Uh, then we have uh, another parameter, max wall sender. Uh, this parameter uh, basically says that uh, you can establish this many replication uh, connections to the database server. Usually, when you take a backup using PGPS backup, uh, PGPS backup utilizes uh, two to three uh, connections. 
so whenever you are um, going to set up this configuration, you have to make sure that you, there is enough room for the standby to connect to it. The next most important uh, parameter would be wall underscore each underscore segments. Um, this parameter tells the server to keep this many wall segments in the PG wall directory. Postgres server usually starts overwriting uh, the wall segments when, once uh, those walls have been shaped or uh, uh, when the server determines that uh, those walls are no longer uh, required uh, for, the, for the database server itself. Uh, that usually happen when there is a checkpoint uh, is made. Uh, checkpoint basically ensures that all the relative pages, uh, all the, uh, uh, the changes that have been made so far have been written to the actual relational file. So after that, uh, uh, removing the wall file prior to that point, uh, kind of becomes uh, useless uh, for the database server. So it can start overwriting those, those but uh, it may happen that those wall files have not been shipped to the standby. If those wall files have not been shipped to the wall, uh, standby uh, or they have not uh, applied onto themselves yet and that wall, files ha wall file has uh, been removed, by primary server, uh, that would create a problem. Uh, standby won't be able to continue working. So you have to ensure uh, that there is enough uh, room available there. So the wall center timeout, uh, this is basically a kind of a ping response uh, for the wall center process. Uh, this way, uh, the, this way the primary server knows uh, if the standby server is still active or not. Um, so although uh, archiving mode is on, uh, usually it is uh, good practice to uh, have this in addition, uh, have, have, have this configuration as well in addition to streaming replication. So in case there are delays, uh, the standby still can read the wall files uh, from the shared location. But if you don't, uh, that means that standby will uh, only, will have on the only one way uh, to receive the data chunk. And that is using the uh, primary connection. Uh, this is it for the uh, master configuration. Um, let me show you the standby configuration for streaming uh setup uh standby dot streaming okay again uh, uh so uh i was talking about uh, primary underscore connection parameter um if you look at the value for this parameter uh, you will see the ip address uh, this ip address uh, is the server that you want to connect to that you want this standby server to get the changes from. The port of that and the primary server, uh, username that you are going to use next to that server, in password, um, and lastly, the optional parameter application name. Uh, the most important one is the host name, uh, port, username, and password. Okay, so I am going to uh, copy this uh, configurations to PG data. for wall archiving. 
So I'm just going to remove everything in the TV data and using base TG base backup command, I'm going to take the backup again. All right, there we go. Um, now, uh, the next step is that we need to tell that uh, standby server to again start in the standby mode. Uh, for that, we need to again create standby SNL file. After that, we need to set up the primary underscore connection information. Um, I already showed that information to you guys, so I'm just going to copy that, that file. Standby dot streaming to PG data. Just to make sure that the required information is there. The primary connection is set. So let's start uh, the standby server. Here we go. The database server has been started. So uh, previously we had created a table uh, that got replicated in uh, while archiving mode. So let's create another uh, table to see if this table is being replicated in this uh, streaming replication setup. So I'm going to create, uh, rename the test underscore tab to test underscore tab three. And this information should be available from the standby. If uh, the standby has caught up and our configuration was successful. And yes, uh, this information is available. Uh, if you see uh, the SQL has connected to the standby server and it can it could query the test underscore tab C table. So uh, this uh, configuration uh, so far, uh, as I already mentioned, that the streaming replication by default is is synchronous and Streaming replication also supports the synchronous mode. Uh, in the synchronous mode, uh, basically, uh, uh, prime, primary uh, ensures that standby has the same information as, uh, as the primary server. To uh, configure the streaming replication setup in uh, synchronous mode, uh, we need to set another parameter uh, that's called synchronous standby name. Let me just go over to the synchronous mode. Okay, here we go. Um, synchronous standby names uh, basically uh, tells the server that you can expect uh, the following uh, standbys uh, to connect to you and that they they should uh, and that and that you should await from for some kind of response from them telling you that they have caught up to you all right so i'm going to uh, switch to master terminal and let's see the configuration 
for synchronous mode. Master dot stream 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 sync stream sync mode. Right. Most of the configuration parameters that uh, are required or same as asynchronous. The only addition is the synchronous standby name. Uh, with this parameter, we tell the primary database server that there is a standby named standby. This is the uh, name that is going to be included in the information uh, that it will receive from the standby. Uh, I will just show, show you in a minute that where, where this name comes from. So we have set up, set this up. Let me copy this to the data of master server. Postes.auto.com. And let's uh, restart our database server to so that it could reflect the new changes. On the standby mode, standby node. What we are going to do is first stop the data server, uh, edit configuration file, and by streaming sync, and so uh, the required information that standby needs to include is already uh, there as part of uh, primary connection info and that information is application name. Uh, see the application name is set to standby. Uh, this is the name that is being expected that we mentioned uh, in the uh, synchronous standby names uh, file. Uh, this parameter uh, accepts a comma separated names so you can uh, specify multiple standby names uh, if you have uh, more standbys uh, you you should uh, name them differently so uh, in case uh, of single standby i have just named him standby so if I, the other standby if i had named standby two i i would uh, comma separate this list and uh, add that name here as well, so that both uh, standbys uh, become um, synchronous uh, mode. So let's uh, copy this configuration file in PG data. And let's start the server. Okay, so the database server has been started. Uh, we already uh, replicated step, step three. Uh, we just converted from asynchronous to synchronous mode. So uh, how do we know that the, our current configuration is uh, under synchronous mode? For that, uh, we have a couple of views on the available to us by Postgres server. Uh, we are going to use those views to see the information. Uh, let me show you that. All right. All 
All right. Uh, this is the view. Uh, dg underscore stat underscore replication that presents you the information uh, that how many uh, replication servers are connected. So, uh, sorry, how many uh, standby servers uh, are connected to this uh, master server? One of the information available is that application name and that this application is uh, connected to connected to the master server and is acting as a standby server. Um, the current state uh, and sync underscore state uh, column shows that if it's uh, synchronous or asynchronous. So sync here uh, tells us that our current configuration is uh, synchronous replication. All right, so this concludes the uh, synchronous replication setup. Next, uh, we will see uh, how to set up uh, cascading replication. But before doing that, uh, let me uh, launch the second standby node and attach that node uh, to the master server. Um, that way we will uh, again uh, review this information uh, available in PG stat replication so that we know uh, what's, uh, how many uh, standbys uh, are connected. And that, that second uh, standby I'm going to configure as asynchronous. So we will have one synchronous standby and one asynchronous standby. So let me launch the uh, other container. H stand by two. Okay, so here is uh, um, another container. Um, let's let's first uh, take a backup from the primary server. In using the PGPS backup, let okay. Let me copy the command from this terminal. It's going to be the same. In the environment is the same for this container as well. Uh, all the uh, environment variables and the settings are same. So we just took a backup from the uh, master server. Uh, I'm going to copy configuration file. And by the streaming, streaming, okay. Just going to copy it. Each data. Okay, we have the primary connection set up. So, what is there? I'm going to just start this. Server. All right. Um, let's see if the data is available on second standby. I'm going to change to standby two. Okay, it's uh, connected and it's replicating. Um, so let's see the information again. Okay, and let me clear the screen. So, so primary that the server has not acknowledged it yet. 
Let me try to connect with Steph. Uh, I'll master it. See, okay, I'm able to connect, make a connection from standby to, to the master server. Um, okay, let's try and see if there is any information available in log file. Oh, I guess I did not configure the logging. Let's stop server. Uh, what we did not do, uh, we did not tell our Data to start uh, in the standby mode. Signal. We did not create this file, that's why it was not uh, connected to uh, master server. Uh, it did not start in the standby mode. So we have again created this file and let's restart the server. Okay, so let's see if the connection has been established. Oh, yes. Um, if you see uh, the output of um, this chat application, you will see two records. Record one is indicating that um, application by the name of standby is connected to me and it's in synchronous mode. Then there is another connection. Uh, it's clearly telling us that an application by the name of standby is connected but from a different IP address and its state is kind of potential because uh, the second standby ha had the same name uh, it's kind of a conflict um, so what we should have done was that in postgres auto sorry uh, in this file, when we specified primary connection info, we should have said application name standby2. Uh, after making this change, let's restart the server. For some reason, it's taking some time. Okay, uh, let me um, uh, recreate the server. Uh, I guess there's uh, some mix up, that's why it's not working. Backup. Uh, we had configuration file, we have to change the name.
name is standby two uh, and we missed the step last okay uh, with this uh, it should work and yes it is um, so um, in the output of um, PG Stash application, the second record is showing that uh, application name standby2 is connected now, and it's connected in asynchronous mode. Uh, because of the uh, application, same application name from, uh, master server was receiving the same application name from uh, two containers, uh, two standby servers, uh, it uh, had some kind of confusion. It, took the both uh, servers as uh, uh, synchronous uh, servers. So uh, this is, so now our uh, current setup has one uh, synchronous standby and the other one is the asynchronous standby. Um, Okay, so uh, the next topic is uh, creating a cascading synchronous application setup. Uh, basically, uh, uh, I have uh, I think already explained that uh, in cascading replication, uh, the standby has the ability to replicate itself from another standby. Basically, this uh, lessens the overhead from the server and that, that, that overhead is basically shifted from the master server to the standby from which it's trying to replicate. Uh, the same uh, as server built-in processes uh, work in this setup as well. Um, the only difference is that instead of uh, the master server wall sender, uh, instead of that process, it will be a uh, wall sender process of a standby that is going to send the change data blocks uh, to the other uh, standby server. So let's start with the configuration. Um, again, on the standby server, we are going to take uh, another backup. Um, but in this uh, configuration, instead of, uh, we, we will tell the primary connection info, to point to existing standby instead of uh, the master standby. So we already have uh, uh, two standbys right now. Uh, one is uh, in synchronous mode and the other one is in asynchronous mode, but they both are connected to the primary server. So let's change the standby server two uh, to instead of following the master standby, uh, Let's tell it to uh, follow the standby server. Right, I'm going to again uh, remove the current setup from standby two node. Uh, I'm going to take another backup. Let's copy the configuration file. Um, for this configuration file, I think I have already to streaming cascading, uh, I have already created this file. Let's see what we have changed in this uh, configuration file. So if you look at the uh, uh, primary connection info, uh, you will see that the IP address has been changed. Uh, from 10 to 11, 11 represents the standby server. Um, let me again change the application name so there is no confusion okay so i'm again going to copy this configuration file in pg data in 
uh, we need to ensure that uh, we start in the standby mode. So we have to get standby that is in file. And that should be it. Uh, let's start server. Start. All right, so the database server has been started. So we did not stop the master server. And now it's showing only one record showing that uh, standby is connected. Um, so right now, uh, our standby two should be connected to the standby one server. Uh, so let's see if it shows us anything. Uh, let's connect with and by server and see what it shows. Okay, now it's, it is showing that uh, there is a standby named standby2 from uh, a different IP address uh, and it's connected with this standby and it is connected in asynchronous mode. So this way, uh, right now, um, one standby is connected to another standby, and it's uh, if any changes are made on the master server, that those changes will be replicated to the standby server, and that standby server will again further uh, send those changes to uh, any other standby that's connected to it. So let's uh, test out uh, this. Uh, Let's connect to the uh, master server and create some data there. Uh, we already had utilized test step three. Let's create test step four and put some data in it. So this data should be available on uh, standby. And this is available. We just do it from test step four that we just created on the primary server. Let's uh, see if these changes have been replicated on standby server two. And yes, they are. Uh, we are able to access that table that we just created on the primary server, on the master server. All right. Uh, that, that was the cascading replication mode. Uh, now let's talk about uh, replication slots. In streaming replication, basically we, so far we have been using uh, max wall uh, segment configuration parameter to ensure that the primary database server does not uh, remove the required wall files before they are applied onto the uh, standby servers, but that's uh, the configuration that user has to maintain. Um, to overcome that limitation, uh, Postgres came up with the replication slots. Uh, basically, these replication slots ensure that the walls are not removed by master server until they have been received by standby. Um, to ensure that, there is a a parameter uh, called max replication slots. Um, this parameter uh, tells the database server that it can expect this many um, uh, slots to be uh, connected on from the uh, standby. And then we will have to create, um, uh, actually create a replication slot on the uh, master server and use that slot name uh, on the standbys um, to ensure that they are connected they are connecting to um, the master server using that slot name 
when slot names are used this way, uh, the database server will ensure, uh, basically it will uh, start uh, communicating that whenever there is uh, data generated on the master server, the replication source will ensure that they are applied to the uh, standby uh, before it allows the database server to remove those vault files. So uh, let's, uh, uh, let's just uh, create that. Uh, here we go. Let's edit this configuration on master. Let's create a replication slot. Oh, I have to specify the host and user. We have created, just created a physical replication slot named slot. And we are going to tell our standby to use this slot. Standby server again, edit the configuration file and add primary underscore slot name. Okay, so uh, our end of there, yes. Uh, restart the servers. And that, that's it for the uh, our replication slots. Okay, so uh, let's uh, go through uh monitoring uh we have already says, uh, created various uh replication modes um so how do we uh check our replication state uh the one way is the g state replication view uh that we have already gone through and we have seen the information that's available from this view um there is a couple of uh, more information uh, that's available and that is send LSN, write LSN, slash three player LSN, and similarly the lags. Uh, basically this information tells you that uh, this much wall file data has been applied on the uh, standby. Uh, whether uh, the wall record has been sent on the stand to the standby, uh, whether the standby has uh, that record has been written onto the standby, uh, it has been flushed to the disk, or it's still uh, available in the buffer, uh, or whether uh, standby has already uh, re replayed that record onto itself. Uh, basically, this information is telling us that ideally. Uh, all these values should be same. Uh, that will tell you that uh, the uh, standby has up to date information. But if uh, there is uh, differences, then those are uh, reflected here. Uh, similarly, uh, right leg, flush, and replay legs are telling you that your standby is uh, how much behind from uh, uh, the master database server. So we, we uh, had configured the uh, standbys, uh, but to ensure that our standby was uh, struck up in the standby mode, uh, we have this in, uh, function um, that we should have utilized uh, to see 
that we started in the standby mode or not. Uh, previously, when we uh, we were configuring uh, standby through server, uh, that server was not supported as the standby mode. And this inquiry uh, should have told us exactly that. PG is in recovery. Uh, it is true if Postgres uh, server is in recovery mode, uh, basically is in the standby mode. On the standby, uh, on the master server, you have uh, this chat application uh, view available. Uh, that view will be, uh, can only be utilized on the master server. But if you are uh, connected to the standby server and you want to know uh, how much uh, uh, you are uh, lagging behind the master or what uh, wallet information is, uh, has been received and replayed, uh, you can query that uh, from standby as well. You can query that from standby using uh, this function, set server building function uh, by Postgres server. PG loss wall receive LSN, uh, last wall replay LSN, and last transaction replay times 10 at the time when last um, wall record was replayed. So let's see. Somehow it's not saying any information. Let's put some data in on the master and see what's going on. Oh, okay. So uh, I guess um, uh, standby one is uh, is configured in the synchronous mode, and uh, it's pretty much uh, in sync with the master. So there is no um, uh, lag here, but the, since the standby two is uh, kind of uh, is this mode configuration and it's connected to another standby. So there is a slight uh, delay and uh, that, that delay is being shown show here. Okay, again, um, on the standby, we also uh, we have this view available to us, uh, PG stat wall receiver. Uh, basically, it will um, show us the state of standby. Standby two, uh, it will show a state of things on the standby. Here, uh, let me execute the same query on the standby as well. Okay, so uh, basically, this view tells us that. Uh, um we are streaming data from a uh, master server uh, this is the information this is the server that we are connected to uh, we are using a, uh, uh, replication slots and which replication slot is being used uh, for this uh, standby server um, and the connection parameters that are being used, uh, they are displayed here as well. Again, uh, it will also show the information re related to the wall. Uh, it will basically show that which uh, wall records have been uh, received, uh, have been uh, applied, and uh, yeah. Uh, there is a couple of uh, more, more information available there. The last message sent time, uh, receive, receive time, the latest uh, wall record that we have received and the time at which we received that information.
so the next is uh, checking uh, delays uh, that have been there uh, in applying the wall file uh, we can choose this query to get the time in seconds to see if there have been any delays And this shows that it's pretty much uh, in sync with master. And let's try it on standard two. Let's do, and it's also in sync. So let's try and add some more data and see if anything changes. No, uh, pretty much quickly caught up. So that's why it's uh, showing that there is no lag. But if there is, uh, it will uh, show you the time. All right, so uh, that's pretty much uh, the streaming application setup. Um, we have covered a couple of uh, replication modes uh, that are available to us and we have seen uh, how monitoring works um, guys I think um, we are kind of short on time so if you guys have any questions uh, you can uh, ask them now yeah uh, so the question is um, the primary connection info that we set in postgres.auto.com for standby. Uh, what if we fail over to the standby? Does that need to be manually removed or will Postgres ignore it? Uh, yes, uh, when you fail over uh, uh, to the standby, so basically you will be telling the standby that you are no longer a standby, you are now a, a primary server, primary active server, that means you can now receive reads and writes as well. So it will ignore a primary underscore connection info parameter in that mode. The question is, um, the replication slots, I thought I heard that it can impact transaction IDs to wrap rounds. Not sure uh, in which context you read that. However, uh, the replication starts to impact the removal of all files. Um, basically, it uh, won't allow the LS um, to wrap around the uh, wall segments. Uh, in when there is cert certain limit is reached, uh, Postgres when determines that. Some of the wall files in PG wall directory are no longer uh, required. Instead of uh, removing those, it start to overwrite those wall files, those wall segments. So that kind of uh, wraparound does happen and uh, is impacted by application slots. If you have any, uh, if you have re read that article and uh, you have still have a question, you can uh, forward that to me on email address. My email is asif.rahman at uh, haigo.ca. The uh, uh, git repository that uh, I shared, uh, that includes the uh, sites deck as well. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.